Hello friends, so let's talk about building mobile applications with Ruby on Rails using Turbo Native. In the previous episode, we had a look at the Turbo iOS library, where we had a demo application that we managed to run using uh, Xcode. So we opened this application, clicked uh, the run button, and uh, it opened us an emulated uh, iPhone, where we could uh, scroll uh, this uh, application that is available at this uh, URL and see how uh, web application can be wrapped into a mobile application. And now let's start building a new Ruby on Rails application. And alongside, we're going to build an iOS application. We're going to see the interdependencies. We're going to build them together and uh, make the application work well on uh, the web and work well as a mobile application. And as an example, I was thinking about building an application like Tinder. Tinder is a classic example of a very snappy, good mobile application that has a uh, uh, mobile navigation that has swipes and so on. So let's try building this kind of application that will work both on the web and on uh, uh, mobile. We're going to start by creating a new application. Let's start by creating actually a new GitHub repository. Let's name it uh, Tinder. Uh, okay, create repository. Now I'm going to clone this repository. I will uh, say git clone git at github.com dot git. Okay, open this repository. And inside this repository, we are going to create a Rails application and an iOS application. Now, usually you would uh, create the Rails application in the root folder. But uh, in this case, we are going to have uh, a root folder named Tinder. And inside, we are going to have a Rails app application. And we are going to have uh, an uh, iOS application. This way, we can track the Git changes in the, the two applications, in the iOS application and in the Rails application at the same time, and see the dependencies. So let's start by creating a Rails application. I will say um, Rails uh, uh, new Tinder uh, Rails uh, database PostgreSQL uh, CSS Tailwind. Okay, let's create the application. Okay, I have generated the Rails application. Now let's uh, get type git status. And uh, we want to commit everything. So we have created a Rails application inside this folder. Git uh, add all. Um, so I couldn't uh, add uh, the Rails repository because Rails repository itself is a Git repository. And I'm trying to push a Git repository inside the Git repository. So I need to make the Rails app not a Git repository. I will open this uh, repository and I will say rm remove uh, dot git now going back um, okay going back and now i can say git add all git status so now i managed to add the rails repository git commit uh, message uh, generate rails app Okay, uh, so let's do git push and have a look at our repository now. Here is a new uh, git repository and you see inside it we have a Rails app. So uh, usually I'm used to like having the Rails app as the root folder of uh, git, but in this case it's going to be a child folder. And now let's generate a new iOS app. To do this I will... Uh, go to file new inside xcode and um, new project uh, and new app i will name it tinder ios uh, organization identifier com dot uh, yeah that's fine i could have tinder or whatever else as the kind of subdomain but uh, yeah that's fine let's just have com dot i'm not changing any other settings uh, clicking on next and I need to select the folder. So, um, okay. Why don't they see folders? Strange. Yeah, I just clicked uh, back and forth and now it's working. So let's open this uh, folder. Uh, Tinder. 
and inside this Tinder folder, we're going to create the Tinder iOS uh, application. Okay, here we have generated this new application. Let's uh, type git status. You see, we have generated this new uh, application. Let's actually add a git ignore. So uh, in the call, I'm going to say dot git ignore. And here I will uh, type uh, uh, iOS uh, Swift UI. And I'm going to have a more git ignore inside Tinder iOS. You see we have a default git ignore in the Rails repository. It's ignoring the stuff for Rails. I'm going to ignore this uh, uh, globally, but I could maybe also do it inside Tinder iOS. And here I'm going to have another git ignore dot uh, git ignore. And here I will say x c user data. So this way we are going to have a bit less uh, spam. Now let's again type git status. Okay, now there's uh, a bit less visible. Okay, uh, so we have generated this new iOS app. Let's uh, save our changes. Git add all, git commit message, generate iOS app. Okay, git push. Let's uh, have a look. So here inside this Tinder, we have Tinder iOS and Tinder Rails. Let's try running the iOS application and let's try running the Rails application. So I will run Tinder iOS. And uh, as we haven't done any changes, it should open a new iOS Swift application. It should be like a blank uh, screen. Well, this is basically it. And we can try running the Rails uh, application. Let's say bin dev. Oh yeah, we need to open the Rails folder. In the Rails folder, I will say bin dev. Okay, let's create a database and run the migrations. Okay, here we have Rails running. Looks uh, uh, good. Now we want to run Rails uh, in uh, the Tinder iOS uh, folder, the uh, emulated application that is currently empty. So uh, we're going to make this a Turbo Native application now. To do this, I'm going to go to Turbo iOS and um, go to the uh, docs, uh, quick start guide. So uh, inside this uh, iOS application, I'm going to install Turbo Native, uh, Turbo iOS specifically. To do this, I'm going to go to the application project. So here I'm going to project, package dependencies, add a dependency. Now, uh, I already have it in recently used, but you might need to have the full URL. So this would be this URL, you would put it here, you would find this repository, and uh, by default, yeah, let's use the latest version. So add package. Uh, ensure that there is not known, but this Tinder iOS application that you've created as the target, add package. Okay, and uh, now I'm going to go to this scene delegate. You see, as it is said in the quick start guide, you should replace everything in the scene delegate with uh, this code. So I will replace it. Okay. And uh, now I will run the application. Okay, and we have the quick start guide running uh, in our new uh, iOS application. Let's save our changes. Git status, git add all, um, git commit message, uh, iOS, uh, install turbo native. Okay, now let's uh, run our Rails application, our local host uh, here. So I will say bin dev in the Ra Rails application. And uh, let's ensure that we have it running uh, locally. Yeah, here it is. 
it works. And now in uh, Xcode, you see we're going to replace this uh, URL with uh, uh, localhost. So let's say HTTP localhost 3000. Okay, saving, uh, rerunning the application. So you have to like rerun the application each, each time you make some changes here so that it takes effect. Let's see our Rails console if anything is happening here. Um, I think it's still uh, in the process of rendering the application. It can take uh, a while rendering uh, the application for the first time. Okay, yeah, basically now we have uh, an empty screen running, but now it's trying to run localhost 3000. So let's add some uh, screens to our application. I'm uh, going back to my Rails application. I will uh, add a couple of static pages. Let's say Rails uh, generate controller, uh, static, uh, it will have uh, an index page and a dashboard page. Let's open our code editor. And here I'm going to add a root page. So root will be to static uh, index. And we're going to have a path to the dashboard. So get uh, dashboard to static dashboard. Okay, uh, let's add uh, this to our navigation. So go into application HTML ERB. And here I will say equals link to uh, home root path and link to dashboard, dashboard path. Let's try running this in our Rails application, bin dev. Okay, something didn't work. Let's see why. Okay, I made a mistake in my roots. Get dashboard to static uh, dashboard. Yeah, it should be like this. Now run bin dev again. Okay, so here we have static index by default and we can go to the dashboard. Uh, let's see if it works in our iOS application. So I'm going to rerun the iOS application once again. Let's have a look at our logs in the Rails app. Is the application from iOS making requests to the Rails application while it's trying to launch? You see it made a request and here we have static index. So we have homepage and dashboard. And you see the navigation gets stacked on top of each other. So yes, it uh, kind of works. Let's uh, save our changes, but before let's try running Rails test. So the auto-generated test should be failing now because we updated our roots. So let's go to static controller test and here we will have get uh, root URL success and get dashboard URL at such response success. Okay, so uh, now we managed to run localhost uh, uh, on our Rails application on mobile. This is really cool. Let's uh, save our changes. So uh, I will uh, actually save changes separately for the Rails app and for the iOS app in this case. So here I will say uh, Rails generate controller static index and dashboard. And uh, in Tinder iOS, I will say that point uh, URL to uh, localhost, but not to a random URL. So uh, iOS use localhost. Okay, uh, looks good. So we managed to run our Rails, uh, our new Rails application on uh, iOS. And we have a couple of pages. Now let's add the authentication with device and see if uh, it works out of the box. So I will say uh, bundle add device, again inside the Rails folder. Rails generate device install. Uh, I'm going to follow this quick start guide. So putting this line into development.rb. 
uh, we already have a root path. We are going to add uh, this alert and notice. We'll put them in application HTML ERB. Then we will add the uh, Rails generate device user to make the user model authenticable. Rails DB migrate. Okay, let's uh, run the server. Oh yeah, and let's uh, require authentication to see the dashboard. So let's open static controller. And here I will say uh, before action, authenticate user only for the dashboard. And index doesn't require authentication. Let's see how it works on the web. So here I'm on the home page. I click on go to dashboard and you see it requires a sign in and it opens up the sign in form. Actually, this design is quite ugly. I'm going to go to application HTML and uh, set flex uh, to flex uh, uh, column. Okay, this uh, design looks a bit uh, better with the closest design that we can have to defaults. Um, okay, so uh, we have home page and dashboard that requires authentication. Let's uh, allow the user to sign in. So um, sign up. Sign up. The user signed up and he was redirected to the dashboard page. So a signed up user can visit both home page and dashboard page. Let's now allow the user to uh, see his username, so his email address, change his password and uh, log out. So uh, to do this, I'm actually going to copy it from somewhere I've done it before, from my blog. Uh, I might have something in this blog post. So I will add these uh, links here. So uh, if user is sent in, show his uh, email and path to edit his uh, uh, email, password, uh, or delete his profile, uh, button to log out. I don't think we need data to be false anymore. Um, otherwise, login or register. And uh, yeah, let's uh, run our application again. So here we see the username. It leads me to this page. I can log out. Okay, so here again I have homepage, dashboard, login, and register. Let's try to see if it works on uh, mobile. Actually, I will just try to refresh the page. Okay, and you see, I didn't have to uh, rerun the mobile application because I already, well, I didn't do any changes in the mobile app. I did changes only in the Rails app now. So, okay, let me try using the same uh, uh, email and password. Uh, I think it was yaroshm.com. Uh, can I type yaroshm.com? Yaro at shm.com. Uh, login. And you see, I managed to login. It worked. Wonderful. Uh, I'm logged in. I can uh, see the dashboard, home page, uh, go to uh, change my account, and I can click on log out. Let's try clicking log out. And uh, it worked. So uh, wonderful. The device seems to work out of the box uh, with uh, Turbo Native. Let's uh, save our changes. So what have we done? Uh, we have uh, uh, install device. In Rails, install device for authentication. Okay, looks uh, quite fine.